Hello, this is Super Transformer Max. Today I'll be reviewing More Than Meets the Eye, Volume 1. We start off with the one shot, The Death of Optimus Prime, which is a start to the two series, Transformers Robots in Disguise and Transformers More Than Meets the Eye. Today I'll be reviewing Transformers More Than Meets the Eye. So, basically, the war between the Autobots and Decepticons ended, and I believe it was chaos. I didn't read that. Um, and Optimus Prime ends up using the Matrix in it. So, anyways, and then they signal back the neutral Transformers who weren't part of the war, who weren't Autobots or Decepticons, and they come back, and they don't like the people who were part of the war. And Optimus Prime says, so Optimus Prime says, um, if you leave the, uh, my fellow Autobots alone, then I will leave the planet. So he ends up leaving, um, Cybertron to make the neutrals happy. Um, the neutrals are called nails, by the way. Um, and he leaves in the ship. He's talking about how now Optimus Prime is dead and Orion Pax be, um, is reborn. And one thing about this, though, is I wonder where he's going. I don't think it specifies. Probably I'm wrong. I'm always wrong. Um, actually kind of glad Optimus left because I'm more of a Decepticon fan and I prefer Rodimus as leader of the Autobots. So there's the picture of him leaving. More of the picture of him leaving. Kind of cool that ends with a little Autobot symbol. Alright, here's where the first issue officially starts. Um, where Rodimus Prime is trying to gather a crew for the Lost Light to find the Knights of Cybertron who were like these people, like the ancestors of Cybertronians. And they think that there is a map that came out of the Matrix, and they think that that's the map to the um, Knights of Cybertron. So he's trying to assemble a group in this place that's apparently significant due to the fact that that was where the first Cybertronian transformed. That's where Nova Prime said he would build the um, original arc, because in the IDW universe there are multiple arcs. And also it was where Optimus Prime declined Megatron's request to surrender. And he wants his whole announcement of finding the Knights of Cybertron to be among those events. So he already has Ultra Magnus and Drift with him. Um, speaking of Drift, he was much hated among fans due to the fact that he was a random new character added to the original cast and the fact he was a stereotypical samurai. But he's much more likable in this series due to the fact that they actually give him a character, so he's no longer so stereotypical. Anyways, here's Wheeljack talking to IDW Prowl. The reason I specify it's IDW because in IDW Prowl's a jerk. Um, Prowl thinks no one's gonna come. Of course, he's mistaken because we're not just gonna fall three Autobots. Anyways, here's a transformation sound. The writer wanted to get that right, and I said he. I say he gets it pretty spot on. Um, here's Bumblebee talking to Ratchet. Bumblebee doesn't want Ratchet to leave. Ratchet wants to leave because he wants to help people they find along the way. Um, one thing, can someone tell me why Bumblebee has a cane and why he doesn't want to get rid of it? Because Ratchet says he could fix it, so why does he want to get rid of it? Um, seriously, someone please tell me this. I haven't read Chaos or Robots in Disguise. Here's Cyclonus, and another thing I'd like someone to... Tell me more about is what's the relationship between um, Cyclonus, Scourge, and Galvatron? Like, why do they become a group? Because in this universe, they weren't made by Unicron. Uh, anyways, I know there are ancient Cybertronians, but still, here's Cyclonus flying, and Prowl doesn't want Chrome, um, yeah, Chrome Dome to leave, and he's actually rewind to tell Chrome Dome to stay since they're best friends. And Rewind ends up wanting to go, too. Um, Prowl wants to keep Chrome Dome because of his special ability. Uh, Rewind's been recording this whole thing because he's an archivist. He has a little cool-looking camera thing on his um, head. And also, Rewind thinks this might be an important event. Here's Prowl flipping a table. That's awesome. And then he's just looking angry, like he's going to hulk out or something. And then he's talking to someone about 
um, necessary modifications. S we cut to six million years ago with Tailgate, whose legs got broken because he tried to take this fragile shortcut to the original arc. And he takes basically a nap and sets his timer for a certain amount, and it doesn't work. And we'll find out more about that later. Six million years later, to be precise. Okay, I'm sorry, that wasn't funny. I'm going to take a little while here and look at the covers for this issue. The weird thing is the covers that focus on a specific character are weird because they all seem to be in their previous designs from the original Transformers ongoing that predates this. Uh, the weird thing about that is, first of all, they're all Earth designs, and they've all been reverted back to their Cybertronian designs due to the fact that they were betrayed, I believe, by Spike, who's in this universe a military general, so they all leave um, Earth, sent also since Cybertron's restored. But either way, they're still cool. And it shows four out of, I believe, there's six characters that have been confirmed to be part of the ship at this point, but I only showed these ones because these were the only ones with the previous design, I presume, since Chrome Dome and Rewind, this is their first time appearing, I believe. Here's the, I think this is the main cover with everyone here, Rodimus Center, and it shows more people who are going to be in it. This concludes part one. Stay tuned for part two.